Well, hello everybody in Aloha Friday. Uh, my name is Becky Sampson. I'm the host of the Ho'okele Friday Aloha Friday uh, podcast. So I am actually checking in from this other studio that we're hopefully going to be setting up here closer to our office. So we want to welcome everybody that's coming on today. We do these every Friday at 3 p.m. Um, Hawaii Standard Time. And we have focused since the beginning of the year to bringing on alumni uh, of BYU Hawaii as well as the CCH or um, Church College of Hawaii. And the purpose for this podcast is to really showcase the stories, the journeys, as every week we try to explain to you what the Ho'okele means, which means navigate in Hawaii, um, is, because we really, the whole Kelly department here at BYU Hawaii is about the whole process of the student, right? From before they come here with recruitment and then going to admissions and then new student orientation. We've got financial aid. We've got, um, we've also got the ISS, which is the International Student Services and Alumni and Career Services. So we've got a big, a big group. So, but this is the alumni relations that puts this on um, where we reach out to our alumni around the world. And we're going to be reaching out even more in the next few months um, to different parts of our region with the Pacific as well as the Asian. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity because I have to say the last couple of months interviewing the alumni have really helped me kind of understand even at a greater level the miracles that come from this school and this university and the journey that people go on. So um, thank you for letting me and be patient with me as I as I say people's names and learn them. Um, and today we have someone really special. This is going to be a lot of fun because uh, many, many of you know Richie Norton and he's been very involved in the school. And I want to just kind of read a, a bio of some of the accomplishments that he's had. So we can just like run right into it and start talking about how BYU Hawaii was very, very instrumental in helping him in his success. So uh, Richie Norton is an award-winning best-selling author of the book of power of starting something stupid in 10 languages and resumes are dead. What to do about it. Um, in 2013, San Francisco book festival awards, the power of starting something stupid first in business and grand prize winner overall. At age 29, Pacific Business News recognized Richie as one of the top 40 under 40 best and brightest young businessmen in Hawaii. In 2019, Richie was named as one of the top 100 business coaches by Dr. Marshall Golds Goldsmith. He is an international speaker, including TEDx and Google Startup Grind and serial entrepreneur. I love those serial entrepreneurs. <laughs> Richie is the founder of Global Consulting Circle, creating scaling businesses models for venture-backed startups. He is the co-founder of Product, helping entrepreneurs go from the idea to market full service with global sourcing and end-to-end -end supply chain. Norton founded Edit, today a multinational video editing service for vloggers. Millions of entrepreneurial-minded people studies Norton's work and blended learning module education programs, self-directed learning courses, masterminds, podcasts, articles, keynotes, interviews, books, mentoring, university lectures. And Richie is featured in Forbes, Business Week, Entrepreneur, HuffPro Inc., and et cetera. Um, Richie also founded a mentor capital org to help end poverty and establish the BYU Hawaii Willis Center for International Entrepreneurship. And that was right here on this campus where he serves as a mentor venture, venture capitalist board and various leadership and teaching positions since its founding. Richie is published in the Journal of Microfinance and is a Change Aid Award winning for outstanding accomplishment in international development, international relations, humanitarian aid, and academic achievement. And Richie received his MBA after leaving here from the world's number one ranked international business school. Thunderbird School of Global Management. And Richie is happily married, has four boys, and lives on the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii. Wow, that is quite a, 
bio. And uh, we just want to welcome Richie onto the show today. Uh, welcome, Richie. Hey, 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 really excited to be here. You made my mom super happy with that introduction. <laughs> that, so, yeah, that's, first of all, amazing accomplishments. I mean, <laughs> kudos to you. And I and I know it's, you know, being a speaker as well, it's, it's hard when it's like, uh, you know, but it's it really is. It's you've been on quite a journey since you left your here at BYU Hawaii. Yeah, just just making it up as as we go, you know. <laughs> but uh, BYU Hawaii definitely made all of that possible, and I'm just so grateful. So I'm glad to be here too. So thanks for having me on. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. So so tell us just a little bit. This is kind of the accomplishment since you went beyond. But you are from Arizona. No. no. San so sorry, <laughs> but 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 uh, I did I did my MBA in Arizona. Yeah, but I uh, born and raised in San Diego, served uh, my mission in Brazil, and then and then came out to Hawaii, and stayed. <laughs> came back to Arizona for a little bit uh, for the MBA, and we had fostered children. And at the end of that, came back and taught in the Center for Entrepreneurship. You know, and just. Making okay, it let's, let's unwind a little bit. So here, one of the reasons why you came to BYU Hawaii, wasn't it your brother? Oh, yes. We're yes. going to get this is yes. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I'm like, you? you know, Hawaii is an amazing place. I'd never been there before. I didn't know mm -hmm. if I'd ever get the chance, honestly. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Brazil, my my younger brother came to BYU Hawaii. I believe he came on a, a tennis scholarship, actually. Mm -hmm. And he would write to me and tell me how wonderful it was. And my parents, too, explaining how what a great place. And so lo and behold, I applied and came and was, you know, it, it, I was like, this place is amazing. And sure, I like to surf and do different things. And Hawaii is great. But that was expected. The reason I stayed was because of the amazing people, you know, from all over the world, doing so many different things. And just the strong like spirit that everyone brought, you know, to the to the classroom and the amazing professors. Anyways, I just fell in love real quick uh, with BYU Hawaii and the mission to influence the world for good. So is that it, was there a pivotal moment that you can think of when you were here when that light bulb moment went on? Because you you're a real supporter of BYU Hawaii. Um, but is there a, a specific moment that you can think of, or maybe even a person that made a difference with that? So, so many, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. When I first came to BYU Hawaii, it was actually, it was actually in October. And at, at that time, I believe the semester started in January. And so I was, I wasn't starting until January. I was just visiting to kind of check it out. And it was when they were launching the Yosepa for the first time ever. Yeah. So this would have been the end of 2001, I believe. And I remember being there, I think it was Elder Ballard who dedicated it. And I remember just seeing that, I remember pushing it. I remember, you know, all, all the things. And it was so magical that I, I couldn't remember anything that was, I don't know. It's hard to say anything more meaningful because there's so many things that are meaningful, but it was like so many things at one place at one time. It was undeniable that something special was happening. Mm, and that kind of started like that planted a seed for you and it kind of started growing. And was that at the time, I know you, when you were a student here, you worked with the alumni relations with the student, student alumni relations. Yeah. So when I, got there, you know, I'm just a single kid trying to figure out how to get married like everybody else. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I did a couple of semesters. I lived in the dorms, you know, I was in Holly four, uh, you know, my, the people around me were from Cambodia and where else Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu. Like it was like so cool. Mm -hmm. And, I kind of just just loved everything about it. And then in the summer, I ended up becoming an EFY counselor. Yeah. And I went to Washington State, and that's where I met Natalie. And uh, yeah. we fell in love and got married within two months, moved back out to Hawaii. What was interesting is she had been at BYU Hawaii, mm -hmm. but when I was there, she was in Ecuador on uh, a volunteer trip working in an orphanage. So... I never met her. So when we came back, 
it was funny because we we off campus housing, we lived in the houses right next to each other. Mm -hmm. We never knew each other. So we would have been even in the same ward. So mm -hmm. everyone knew us separately, but not together. Mm -hmm. It was bizarre when we came back. But and you guys went off to EFY and then you got married and, and came back. <laughs> came back, had nowhere to live. So we lived in the lot EAN. Um, I know what people, that is. You do know now? Okay. The people, a lot of people have totally forgotten that it exists. And uh, it was a, we were very grateful for it. I can't say there weren't cockroaches everywhere, you know, but, but uh, we, we, we appreciated it. We lived in Kahuku, you know, there was no room in TVA until eventually we were accepted in and uh, we had our first kid. Our first son was born in um, Kuku hospital, you know, mm -hmm. and around that time, that's when I ran for student body president mm -hmm. and uh, won. And I, I can talk details there, but it was an incredible experience. Fast forwarding, um, that's when I came up with the idea to start a center for entrepreneurship. Uh, that's when I came up with the idea to create a student alumni association so that students could be paired with people from their home country and continue that network. And then after I graduated, then yes, I worked with the alumni association during the Jubilee in 2005 to help make that happen. And so, so home, so much of your life now is very entrepreneurial. Where did that come from? I mean, obviously, when you got here, you probably didn't see that there was a program. That's why you got involved with the Willis Society, right? Or the Willis uh, Center, Entrepreneur Center. But so at the time, at the time, there was no such thing as a center for entrepreneurship. Right. And right. it seems it seems silly now. Like, oh, it, it's always been there. Back then, there was nothing. There was a school of business, and schools of business are amazing, but they're built to help people become managers and work in companies. That's like literally historically what they're made for. Mm -hmm. And um, they would do these awesome business plan competitions and people would win them, but no one would start their businesses. They'd spend their money at Foodland. Nothing wrong with that. And I thought that's so silly with all these people who, who want to go home to their home countries or somewhere else or do whatever they want to do. Why aren't we helping them figure this out through entrepreneurship? Yeah. You know. President Shumway worked really close with, with me and asked, you know, like, what's going on with students? And I'd ask and they'd say, I don't ever want to go home because there's no jobs. Mm. And I mm -hmm. said, well, I can't do anything about that. But what if there's a way to create jobs? Mm. I remember talking to my economics professor, Sister Haynes, and she said, yeah, you know, BYU students shouldn't just be employees. They should be employers. Uh, and yeah. that really that really broke my brain. I was like. Yeah, why aren't we even talk? Why aren't we talking about this? Mm -hmm. Like this is a thing. Why aren't we being taught this? You know, mm -hmm. and the good news is there were some teachers that were interested in that and had that kind of experience. My background, entrepreneurship, and interest in it came from my dad and my mm -hmm. grandpa. Uh, like when I wanted to get a job <laughs> in the summer as a kid, sixteen years old, my dad says you don't want a job, and I'm like, what kind of dad says you don't want a job? Uh, you know, not to get one. He said no. He said go to the watermelon patches out there, the farms in El Centro near San Diego and ask if you can buy the irregular sized watermelons that they can't sell to the grocery stores. And I'm like, what kind of idea is that? And I ended up doing it and uh, filled up our family van full of watermelons. And one day, 4th of July, my brother and I, we made more money selling watermelons than we would have made wow. work minimum wage the entire summer. So. When I learned that and when I was on my mission in Brazil and I saw I worked in areas that were favelas, extreme poverty, mm -hmm. and I saw such amazing people with amazing talents trying to figure out how to have time for their family because mm -hmm. they, they couldn't even put food on the table. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe there's a way to help people expand their networks, you know, and expand their resources and, and find a way to help them. So when I came to BYU Hawaii and learned that these very same struggles were very real for people all over the world, even in our own backyard in Hawaii, I said, I proposed an idea for a center for entrepreneurship, entered it into the business plan competition at BYU Hawaii that they had at the time, and it totally failed. They said, um, the devil is in the details. This isn't something you can do. And I'm like, watch me. So I worked closely with uh, Greg Gibson and other professors that were on campus but I mentioned Greg specifically because he be eventually became the first director of the Center for Entrepreneurship. And he went with me to Mongolia where I started, uh, my, my dad funded it, um, an alum, alumna. 
Her name is Aryuna from Mongolia. Mm -hmm. from what we understand, she was the first uh, business to ever be funded out of BYU Hawaii. And the whole idea was social entrepreneurship. How can we create jobs? Mm. President Shumway loved that, used it as a way to legitimize the need for a center for entrepreneurship to the board. They put me in front of donors as well as our unit story. And that's when we started getting donors involved and putting money together to help more students, in which we went out and started companies all over the world, Papua New Guinea, Cambodia, Fiji, uh, American Samoa, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of different cool places. And then that was ran by volunteers for years and years and years until more recently. Um, they started hiring people. So it's been an, it's an amazing ride. But what's cool about it is BYU Hawaii is small enough even still mm -hmm. to see a problem and to solve a problem mm -hmm. and to make a massive difference and to have amazing professors all around you to help you. Like I knew what I was doing. I'm in the middle of college. I have no time. I have my first baby. I'm just married. I'm student body president. I, I don't know what's going on. I just know I wanted to help. And so by getting mentors right there on campus, it was able to happen. They say that uh, BYU Hawaii is a living laboratory. I mm -hmm. think that was the word they used in the dedicatory prayer of the Aloha Center. And um, I, I wish more students and I hope more students know that if you wait till after graduation to start doing the things you want to do, you missed a major part of your education. It I is. love that you bring that up because that is something that even we had a Mentoring Monday uh, podcast that we do where alumni um, mentor basically the students or anyone that watches the, the podcast. But that's one of the things that they said last week is that you've got to take take advantage of the opportunities here because you're never going to have those opportunities again. You know, it's, it's really it, I mean, it makes sense because traditionally we're told, let's see how smart you are. Test you. Yeah. Let's see how smart you are. Test you. And then oh, now that I have a resume, I mm -hmm. can now go get this job. Well, lo and behold, that doesn't work anymore. A lot of corporations don't even care about your resume. They want to see your actual practical experience. Mm -hmm. And we have a situation with universities right now that we've never seen before in history. And it, but it all makes sense at the same time. Mm -hmm. When students don't realize, I, I wish they would realize, and many do, but many don't, that the thing you want to do in the future, you should start in school, mm -hmm. in extracurricular activities, as a project, because you'll never have, President Shumway said to me one time, you'll never have more time than when you're in college. And I'm like, what? I'm so busy right now. Like, this is the craziest time of my life. What are you talking about? Lo and behold, he's right. Life only gets busier. So yeah. when you realize you have resources, when I say resources, I mean access to cash, mm -hmm. funding, uh, professors, um, their connections. And now alumni still have access to that. But when you're sort of, right? But when you're in the school and you're a student, the opportunity cost for not starting your dream while in school is massive. Well, you know, it's interesting that you, you bring that up too, is because informational interviews, like this is something I, I've told, uh, you know, as we're in the business department, I was last week, last year, I should say, and they had us do these informational interviews. You know, like just saying that you're a student, how many doors that opens up? Totally. I, mean, I want to help a student. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? And, you're no, just, point. and yeah. you know, I'm an old student myself. And so I, I mean, but I, I'm telling you, I talked to some of the CEOs of big companies because I'm saying, Hey, for a project, for one of my classes, I need, you know, and yeah. so it is, I tell people, I tell the students all the time, I'm like, do take advantage of this time where you can yeah. use that. No, it's and so true. What was well, one of the, I was just thinking, I'm sorry, but um, what was one of the projects that you did while you were here? Cause I know that you you took on a lot of things, but what was one of the things that you like said, right, I'm gonna take on this project while I'm here as a student and ran with it? Well, I use the word project to define anything that you actually wanna do. So instead of it being an idea, it's something mm -hmm. that actually happens. So specifically the Center for Entrepreneurship was my project. Mm -hmm. uh, the Student Alumni Association was my project. Uh, we had all kinds of leadership events, you know, after after that, the BYU Hawaii hired me for three years to be a consultant to help, you know, create earned income uh, instead of donation money and um, dozens and dozens of projects every year, like helping bring B uh, EFY to Hawaii, creating mm -hmm. with with other people, the International Business Conference and everything that we did was was harnessed around the idea. Oh, one of the big ones um, we put on the first e-business conference at BYU Hawaii ever. This is when people were like almost like what's the internet you gotta remember i graduated 2004 december so basically 2005 right 
-hmm. but Facebook started to really become public like out there in 2004. So when I graduated, social media, the way we know it now, didn't exist. And that's not a metaphor. Mm -hmm. It did not exist. So you think they're not teaching social media now. Imagine before Facebook existed. Right. So I was trying to find ways to help bring the future, uh, you know, that, that what's, what's happening to current students on campus, all with the idea of how can you influence the world for good. I remember one time I felt like the, this, this might be even weird to share, but like the mission statement, the vision of David O. McKay mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we would help influence the world for good, establish peace internationally. For some reason, I never felt that meant something to me because I'm from the mainland. Mm -hmm. I thought I literally thought it was only for people uh, who aren't from the mainland, to be honest. Mm -hmm. When I finally realized, no, this actually applies to me too. I took it to heart and it's been a part of everything I've, I've ever done at BYU Hawaii and even today to fulfill that mission. Wow. By the way, I just want to, before I forgot to mention at the beginning, I know some people are making comments on, on Facebook. Please add questions, comments, hello, greetings. What do you love about Richie? How do you know Richie? Why don't you ask that question? How do you guys know Richie? Because <laughs> this kind of went out to a lot of different people. So, uh, so yeah, feel free to make comments. He can see them. I can see them. Um, and we can bring them on. Looks like there's lots of love. We got Bobby saying, hey, uh, go Richie, we love you. I love Bobby. <laughs> Is it Fred? So, Fred so, so let, let, let me tell you something real quick while you're calling out these people. Like, this, this is why BYU Hawaii is amazing. I, mm -hmm. I don't think to any other university, but it's not like this at any other university. You remember maybe one or two people and forget the rest, but at BYU Hawaii, you kind of remember everybody because you get to know everybody, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's incredible when you're like, what, like, what changed you? What made you think about BYU Hawaii? Sure, the OSEPA launch, and of course, you know, starting the Center for Entrepreneurship and, and President Shumway. But there, there were other people like like Bobby Okoy, who's working over at PCC, who like paid attention to people <laughs> in like in a loving, amazing way, mm -hmm. and would spend time to help people. Like mm -hmm. that's it sounds like that's a normal thing on a university campus. But I visited a lot of universities, and to be honest, it's kind of like New York City. Everyone's passing each other because they're so busy. Mm -hmm. So I like that at BYU Hawaii. Right. I remember John O. I think his his name is John O'Shefka. I never know if I'm saying it right. I, at the time, he managed like the calendar for the university, and somehow I don't know what his title was. He did all kinds of things. Somehow, everybody knew him, and he knew everybody. And mm -hmm. I remember um, I was in the Aloha Center just uh, it was during the time I was student body president, and I just stopped because he he'd always look at me and smile. He'd always salute. And he did that to everybody, not just me, everybody. And I said, man, you seem to know everybody. And you're like the only one on campus that seems to like, get things done, like, like immediately. And I said, because, you know, you know, the, the runaround sometimes you get when you go from one department and then sent to the next and sent to the next and sent yeah. to the next and then sent to the next and then sent to the next. <laughs> I, it's, so it's, I, I hate to admit it, but yes. Yeah, it's a real thing, man. It's just part of the fun. And it's merry go around. So he, um, he didn't do that. He would stop. You'd ask him a question. He'd walk you to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, man, how do you do this? What are you doing? And he said this. I, I never forget it. You got to remember, this is 15, 16 years later. Mm -hmm. And I still remember this. I brought it into almost everything of my interactions with others that I can remember. He said, I treat everyone like Shumway. Mm -hmm. President Shumway at the time. And, and he said, he, he explained, he says, if Shumway asks you to do something, you do it. Be, not you know because you love him, respect him, and you know the role of being the president of the university. So he said he treated everyone, and I don't I don't mean just everyone. I mean everyone, students, people that you know, other employees, other you know administrators and staff, teachers, uh, visitors. He treated them with that kind of respect, and he mm -hmm. called it ownership. Mm -hmm. And I like ownership. Like I've, I've obviously heard that word before, but I was like ownership. And so we went back to my team at BYU Hawaii with the student mm -hmm. group there. And I'm like, we need to take more ownership of what we're doing. And I told them the story and I said, we're not going to be a part of the runaround game, you know, and even within our different roles, even if it's not exactly what we do, we're going to be flexible and we're going to help each other out. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, Clayton Hubner, um, he passed away in recent years in, in a tragic accident. Love him to death. 
like he was a great professor and he taught me about accountability and how to uh, create sustainable projects. I remember the first time he talked about sustainability and I was like, sustainability, how can something last forever? How can something last for a long time? How does money and meaning go together? And that's why when we set up all these different projects I was working on, we did it with the intent that this thing can last forever um, or at least as long as it's, as it's still relevant. Um, I, uh, Von Orgel, you know, the greatest man on the, on the whole planet, you know, like so kind. He spoke at my son's funeral. Like, like, like so many people are so good and so kind to be Hawaii and in La EA community extended that there really isn't anything else in the world like it. And it's not like something you can just say and even brag about. It's just something that's super real. I think people actually know it. Um, but until you've actually experienced it, you don't even understand. So uh, to say I'm I'm uh, grateful is an actual understatement. Like I am super humbled by everyone I meet on campus and off. Well, I know when you and I talked the other day, I appreciate you saying that. I the one of the things that really stood out to me was this. This was such a a, a ground of learning for you that just like catapulted everything. And I think you are so uh, you are like I'll just do anything, anything you guys want me to do. Like. <laughs> With, with BYU Hawaii. So your loyalty here, and I really like that you bring up too that we all know each other because this is such a small campus that it's not, we don't get lost in the numbers. No. Um, that it, it really, over time, you really get to know a lot of people. And the thing that came to me, Richie, the other day after you and I spoke too, was, and it just came out of my mouth, by the way, this is just, this is, I was just thinking about you and your life and what you've done and this is what came to me. Movers and shakers are risk takers. Mm. And I think that that's what, what kind of sums up for me too, is, is that you've taken risks to get out of the box and to learn from those mentors and like, you know, President Shumway. And I know you worked with Rowena um, as well. If you just get out there and just do it, you just do it. And you I, learn love, I love Rowena Reed and Phyllis Peters. They're who I worked with so much mm -hmm. and be mentored um, by them, especially during the Jubilee, which, you know, is when we brought out, uh, <laughs> when President Shumway and everyone were, there was a million things happening during homecoming, but they brought out Gladys Knight that year and mm -hmm. everyone. I, and it was just so interesting because you're about the risk taking thing. Sure. There's risks and in, inherently like in anything you do, just like being alive. But at the end of the day, you can reduce that risk by just kind of asking people what they want mm -hmm. and serving them in that way. Mm -hmm. Very simple. So like, like, for example, like when you put together a project, I'm just putting this together for people who might want to try and start something new. Uh, you're, it's, they're actually called forcing functions. Like things just start happening when you put a deadline out there and you create a project mm -hmm. and you put things in place and you create a new environment for them to happen. So for example, now when you go to... Um, the gym, you know, and their seats and they're numbered and you know where you're going to go. That was because when Gladys Knight was coming, me and this other guy walked around and counted every single chair and drew a little map because before no one knew how many seats there were or, or what tickets to give out. So it's, it's just like there's so many little things you would never know or think to do. And so I learned that when you have these big picture dreams, you can break them down into smaller, more manageable parts. And if you're willing to do the tiny detail work, then you're also able to create you know, the, the big stuff at the same time. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, um, I want to ask you, because a big part of what we're doing too with the Ohana Network that we've got coming on is mentorship. How important was that mentorship that you, that you got when you were here at BYU-Hawaii, whether it was employees that you worked with or teachers, professors, um, other people in your life? Yeah, I mean, the fastest way to learn anything is to have a mentor, especially mm -hmm. one who's already been there and done that. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's different types of mentorships. And I think people get confused. I mean, there's the there's the mentor that might sit by your side every single day and mm -hmm. help you. Then there's the mentor who in passing comes and visits BYU Hawaii and, and teaches and you get in a, in a lecture series and you get to learn from that, maybe shake their hand or exchange mm -hmm. a business card. Um, and then there's mentoring by by reading, you know what I mean? And then there's mentoring from having a partner. It goes, it goes on and on and on. There's different degrees of mentorship. But at the end of the day, you can either go along life trying to figure it out on your own, which is fine. Like do what you gotta do. 
But if you want to live like those dreams that you might have in, full, in, in retirement, or if you want to serve people now in the way that you think you might do when you're finally done, you know what I mean, with life, you can actually overcome years and years and years of uh, wasted time, mm -hmm. you know, by doing it now. You know, I, people ask me sometimes, like, why did you start those things? And why did you even think that way? And I always wanted to end poverty. That's my goal. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, or however, however that can be possible. And um, it, it, I always thought that I'd be doing these things that happened 15 years ago and are still happening now. I thought I would wait till I'm 65 to do it because that's the year you retire. Mm -hmm. supposedly. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, but what if I wanted to do that now? Because that would be messing over a generation now, their kids and their kids. That's over 40 years is potentially three generations of people mm -hmm. in your lifetime that you don't help directly. And I thought that's wrong. So the only way I was able to do these things is when I thought, but I also have to feed my family. So how can I do this dream that's in the future right now and also feed my family? And the on only answer is mentorship. Yeah, you and just, you mentor you a lot of people that know how, yeah, yeah. So that's what's cool about being a mentor is, is that we're mentored, right? And then we mentor other people and how does it, for you, because I know that that's a big part of your consulting and mentoring, how does it feel when you are mentoring other people, whether it's a student or whether it's a client, and they actually listen to what you say and do it? That's a good point. That's it's good funny, point. too, because people will ask, not necessarily from me or from you, but just in general, yeah. people will ask for help and not doing anything with it, and they wonder why people stop helping them. No one wants to help an, an ungrateful person. Okay. I'm not saying that specifically to anyone. I'm just saying in general, uh, when people want to be mentored and have it become a deeper mentorship, they mm -hmm. should do something with it, right? Like that, mm -hmm. that's not what, what you're saying. But nothing feels more, I don't know, Reward. nothing makes you happier than having someone feel successful, like become successful, do something that works and, and helps them be happy a lot of times people will try to pick my brain and I'm like, I don't really want my brain picked. I'm not a zombie guy or something like that. You know, or, you know, like, are you a zombie? What's happening? Like, I'd rather have you and help you make you do something amazing. You know what I mean? And, and, and when you do that, things change. So mentorship super important. And my goal in life is to help other people be successful. And so even I'm actually more excited about other successes. This is genuine than I am my own. Mm -hmm. And so being able to help others is, is huge. But you know what? I always learn more from the people I'm helping, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, than I probably teach them. And the reverse mentoring thing and having students regardless of age um, is a real deal. One time Stephen M. R. Covey asked me to work with him and he said he wanted me to like teach people about speed of trust. And he wanted me to like, I was in my mid twenties right after college a little bit. And he said, he wanted me to teach executives. And I said, aren't I too young? And he kind of banged on the table because me and him in his big boardroom. Mm -hmm. And he says, <laughs> he says, Richie, people say they have 20 years experience when in reality, they only have one year's experience repeated 20 times. <laughs> wow. That's, that's actually true. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and that kind of blew open windows of opportunity for me. And he wasn't saying experience isn't important. It is sure. He was saying continuous improvement is important. Continuous learning is important, but even more important is continuous action, yeah. which most of us over time decide we're, we already know what we're doing. And so we stop improving and we stop doing. It's a sad state, but um, mentoring can help anyone overcome that really, really quickly. <laughs> You know what, when we try to do it on our own and it doesn't, we go so much slower when we're doing it on our own. I know I'm a real big believer in mentorship and it's just so wonderful when I'm mentoring somebody um, and, and they actually go and make a difference in their life. And it's just like, ah, that's the best payback as you a know, mentor. I, you know, it's so true. And I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't know this for sure, but, but I know in many cases it's true. I don't think current students understand the access they have to the smartest people, most kind people on the planet, right there on campus, right yep. there in the community, and also the donors that come. The people that come to BYU, Hawaii and serve, it's a major investment and it's a major blessing. And they're actually not doing it somewhere else where they could because they love this place so much. And, and it, it is a different breed of people 
that come to BYU Hawaii to help change the world that you won't find on any other BYU campus mm -hmm. and to miss out on the opportunity to talk to like the cream of the crop hurts my soul. So please do everything you can in a normal, natural, cool, giving way yeah. to do this. You do not want to be transactional. You want to be a transformational thing where you're helping others. Exactly. You're not like, like over, like, like whelming someone with stuff but you find ways to serve them. I call it start, serve, think, ask, receive, and trust. Mm. -E -A -R -T. Serve others, think others, earn the right to ask others, receive from others, and then, and then trust that process and make magic happen. Too many of us are so scared and we don't know what we're doing. And we, so we, we retreat when the actual answer should have been to press forward and find someone to help you and be that leader that you know you can be. Exactly. I, I definitely have found success even in my life. I this all the success that I've had in my life has never come without a mentor. You know, I'm I'm the type of person get me the quickest way there. Who's already been successful at it? And it's the same thing with the alumni. Like it's so amazing that we have, the, I mean, the Ohana Network, when I came into this department and saw the Ohana, Ohana Network and realized, wow, what a tool. I mean, it's basically the LinkedIn for our Ohana, really, for the the people that have lived and worked here, who have gone to school here, and then for the students that are here. How do we link those together? You know, because who better to mentor you through school is the yeah. alumni that have been there. Yeah. Well, right? that your, your your thinking it was was it spot on. That's what I was thinking um, while I was you know after I finished my MBA and I was um, with with our foster children and just hanging out in Arizona. You know, um, uh, figuring out what my next steps are, and I was missing Hawaii. And I thought, why don't we connect? And that's when I started I Love BYU Hawaii Facebook group. You know, mm -hmm. and I worked with Bobby Akoi and Jan Lasuma to help me, and I talked to all kinds of people to see if it was something that would be helpful. And all of a sudden it's grown to, you know, 14,000 people plus as a way. And one of the only ways on the planet, I think of any of the BYUs where people are actively daily sharing mm -hmm. information, helping, offering ways to network and do jobs. Uh, there's literally nothing like it in real time and unofficially for people to actually make this stuff happen. And it would be hard to recreate maybe on any other campus. Uh, maybe they could, but because we're a global institution, we have people from all over the planet and there's not that many of us and we all love each other and we want to make make things happen it's become something that has actually changed lives in a real way so i'm, I'm super grateful for everyone who's a part of that which by the way i'm going to thank you for starting that you and bobby akoy i think and then lay you guys are all like super active on there um and i know that you i mean i don't know if you ever sleep because you <laughs> you post things at all times <laughs> i don't I don't sleep. No, I, I get my rest. That's okay. You know, and, and like, like Lay Cummings, let me give you an example. I've been working with her for 15 or 16 years mm -hmm. uh, in different projects over time on different things. That's what I'm saying. Like she's so incredible. And here she is now in the alumni office. She, she like, and she's like the perfect, if you were to embody the spirit of BYU Hawaii, it would be Lay Cummings. She, mm -hmm. she's, she's incredible. And what, what's amazing about, about, about her and BYU Hawaii and the alumni office and all the alumni is that people care. Mm -hmm. they people, really go, people go to universities and they don't care. They're there to get a degree. At BYU Hawaii, sure, you're gonna get a degree, but you're, you also care. You don't find that. It's amazing. Yeah, that's, that is, I've talked about that on the show several times is how impressed I am with this department and the people and the quality of the people. I mean, I'm, I'm a newbie in here and I just get, it gets me emotional thinking how grateful I am to, to work with such amazing people that like every day it's like, well, how else can we serve? How else can we reach them? How can we get to the students and the alumni yeah. to, to all of it? It's, it's amazing. I, I remember you might not all know these people, but David Lucero and EC Kangaika, and he would take our, our leadership team and other people through leadership things, you know, up to that pavilion up above the temple. Mm. And, We'd, we'd, um, and, and down below it, we'd go over to some of these these farms and uh, the TVA farms and talk about the law of the harvest. And then we'd go up to the pavilion up there, like a Zebo thing, and we'd overlook La Ie and go, this was all just Nothing. forest and then, you know, sugar plantation. And then imagine the vision, you know, that the founders and David O. McKay and everybody must have had to be able to make this happen over time and, and the temple itself. And all of a sudden you get this like sense of history 
and and almost like in an artistic cultural way and you bring in the culture of giving of hawaii and mm -hmm. mama nuhi who's you know that, that statue of her mm -hmm. down below and you learn all these stories and you go where am i this place this place is heaven <laughs> That's why all these alumni want to come back. Go ahead and put a note in the chat. Like, you want to come back to BYU, Hawaii. We're back to let you. Uh, yeah, I, I, that is so true. It's just such a special. And you kind of can feel the ancestors, right? You can feel. I remember when I was doing the interview with um, Charlie Gu, I think it was. He yeah. was only nine years old, right, when he came here. Wow. And I mean, nine-year-old, you know, they're like, get me out of here. Let me go play. You know, <laughs> But he was nine years old when this first CCH started. And to be here at that moment where, I mean, that kind of prophetic, like this place is going to be something someday and go, yeah, right. You know what I mean? And then now to see where it is now. And, and, and it's changing all the time, right? They're growing. And, yeah. and so... It is a very, very special thing to be a part of this. Um, and speaking of which, I know that you've got coming up on fall, you guys are talked about doing a reunion for the your chapter because you're the chapter president. Yeah, I'm the Hawaii chapter chair. And so I put out a survey recently in the I Love BYU Hawaii group. But obviously, there'll be other ways we can communicate. But we're just looking for ways that when things, you know, the environment's kind of hard to get together. Mm -hmm. uh, person. And so we're looking at more ways to connect and be helpful and create fun and valuable experiences, either online or or together. So we're, we're shooting for um, something bigger than normal. There's always something going on somewhere, some in some way. So we're hoping maybe to involve, um, I don't know, who knows, some, so we got a new president, maybe that guy will come help us out. You know, <laughs> we're looking, we're looking for really um, positive ways that we can all give back you know, to BYU Hawaii and the students who are going through something very unique and very difficult. And those of us who uh, are not in school anymore, we might be able to find ways to help them uh, make that more, I don't know, impactful or meaningful or influential in some way. So looking to do something like that. Yeah, I know that when uh, the whole pandemic, when COVID hit last year, a lot of students struggled with anxiety, right? Like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? How am I going to finish schools? Because we weren't familiar with the online schooling at that time. So everything got swept right onto online. And I got thinking, I'm like, man, you know, as one big family, if we came together and could support each other and saying, hey, if I just need to say, hey, you root you on and keep going, you got this. No, it's um, true. And, and who who better to lead than our new president at BYU? I like I, mm -hmm. I no one could be better. I think he is an absolute genius, very kind, again, caring. And he's seeing things that no one has seen before in a way that no one could have before because of the times. So I think uh, you know, we're we're very fortunate to have him leading. And things are things are changing quite a bit. So some of the things, what are the ways I know that being a chapter, so we're going to be, just so everyone knows, uh, once the second Friday of every month, we're going to be featuring a chapter president around the world. So this is kind of your, because you're the Hawaii chapter. You guys have sub chapters on all the other islands, correct? Or no, you're not yet. You're well, working. Let's, let's put it this way. Everybody everybody on every island uh, in Hawaii loves BYU Hawaii and is will is probably already making things happen unofficially, which is the way it should be. So let's say yes, hardcore, active, and amazing. Uh, as far as like activating um, in an organized way, who does what, when, and where, we need that. But at the end of the day, um, <laughs> it's not about some weird role or position or doing something. It's really about helping others and, and finding a way to help more people more often. And connecting. So yeah, that's something that we're going to be working on is, um, is, is bringing our Ohana together um, from, from here, you know, bringing all of the locals together. Yeah. And support and all over the world too. Absolutely. So, Kind of as we wrap this up, where where are you in your life right now? What are you working on right now? Where are you where are you spending a lot of your time? Because I know that you were doing containers for a while. Yeah, for housing. Yeah. So after yeah yes yeah so after so after, I'll explain that. So after I wrote 
the power of starting something stupid, which the idea was stupid is the new smart. Um, mm -hmm. That idea that you have that's been pressing on your mind, you haven't done something about, maybe the smartest thing you can do, there's a reason, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and so, so that book did well. And so people started reaching out for help and I have a background, lo and behold, all the way back with Kashmir and Mongolia, mm. the project, the idea to fill a need at BYU Hawaii for a center for entrepreneurship where there was none came full circle. And uh, I worked with alumni to help start this company called Product. So my business partner, TFN Magre and his wife were both alumna, alumnus from BYU Hawaii as well as a community member Jace um, Bennett, we put together an organization that helps people make products. We make a hundred different products at any given time, more or less. Uh, mm -hmm. We work with alumni in China and all mm -hmm. over Asia and actually all over the world, even in Mexico. And when I say alumni, I mean actual alumni. We work with alumni all over the world to make physical products for entrepreneurs, influencers, um, large corporations, small businesses, even during the pandemic, you know, to, to help states mm -hmm. and hospitals and, um, uh, you know, elderly homes, all these things, al alumni came to the rescue. I'm not even joking. So that company, it. yeah. The networking, that was one of the first things I noticed when I came here is the networking. And I'm like, oh my 100%. gosh, did yeah. these people guys realize what a networking opportunity yeah. is? Yeah, so people were like, "What? Like, what's happening with the Hawaii alumni chapter?" I'm like, "Go to I Love BYU Hawaii. We've connected to the entire world. Like, what? What more is there to do? I mean, there's a million things to do, but like, you could find, you know, a hundred things every day, more or less, right? Anyway, so that company, Product, makes all kinds of things, including container homes and tiny homes, uh, jewelry, books. The whole idea was basically to help. So, if an entrepreneur has a hundred things to do. And the last thing is to brand it and sell it. We do the 99 things behind the scenes that nobody wants to do. Cause that's where most people stopped because they didn't know where to start. So we just right. do it and then they can sell it. It's, it's an amazing program. Um, all the things I do, people say, it's so weird. You do different things. And I go, no, for me, it's all about giving people their time back. You know, my, my brother-in-law is buried in La EA. My son is buried in La EA. You know, my wife had a stroke and lost her memory. It came back. My foster kids came and went. It's, it's horrifying. My son was hit by a car in Cam High and should be dead. And when this happened, I thought, does God hate me? And I immediately thought, he doesn't. And these are these, he didn't do this to punish me. And these things weren't intentional either. And I learned to have unconditional God for, uh, unconditional God, unconditional love for God. Mm. Don't blame daddy in the sky. And when mm. you finally stop blaming God for the things that are happening in your life, you can finally take keep your faith and have the um, the advantage to do something about it with your own two hands. And so when I create businesses like that editing company and other things you you mentioned in my bio, they are all to give people their time back so they can spend more time with their family because that's what I lost. And I just, there's nothing that's more important. So that's super important to me in my next book. Uh, the working title is called Time Tipping, kind of a public announcement. I just got and accepted a deal from Hachette. They're one of the top five publishers in the world. And um, I'm going to be working on a book with them that should be coming out next year uh, to help. I'm calling it kind of an anti-time management slash uh, move from distraction to action uh, slash whatever you want to call it book as a way to actually live your best life right now um, by having an abundance of time so that the projects you create give you more time, not take away. Everybody's right. doing these weird goal setting things that they learned in school where they, they walk 10 steps and the 11th is supposed to happen. It didn't happen for me. It doesn't happen for anyone else I know. People that make things happen don't walk the 10 steps. They might walk a million or they might might walk one, but they're doing the, the main thing that works to have the 11th thing happen, the 11th step right now. In psychology, they call it final cause. And so I try to help people really work on the goal after the goal. And so when you say, what are you working on? It's just more of the same. Help people be successful and have their time. And that's super important to me. Yeah, and I love I love that you do that also with helping with the alumni around the world because really and we live in such a world that it doesn't matter where you live, you can make money on on the internet, right? And there's yeah. a lot of opportunities. It's so yeah. true, and I think I mentioned to you before it was so funny because our our pitch back in the day, you know, with, when starting this idea for the Center for Entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. was to have remote centers using CD-ROMs in churches. I know, and now that. you know CD-ROMs aren't really a thing anymore because the internet's there. But this whole thing of working, you know, inside of churches and teaching people like, you know, 
it happened. Now we I didn't have anything legitimately to do with that, but the thinking around how to make the world get the love from BYU Hawaii was there. And now here we are all over the world making things happen. And uh, whether you feel like it's happening for you or not, now's your chance to do something about it. Yeah. It, every possibility ever is now, it's never been easier. It's never been harder and it's never been easier. It's kind of a conundrum, but. <laughs> Getting it's getting smaller, right? The more yeah. we connect, the more, yeah. and, and that's something too, that's really cool about connecting with alumni. We already have the base connection or relationship that we don't have to, they're not cold leads, they're warm leads. That's right. So just say, Hey, I went to BYU. So did I, okay, what are you doing in your life? And, and that networking becomes a lot easier. I, um, I probably get 10 or 20 messages from people who are currently students, becoming students or former students, alumni mm -hmm. asking me questions. And um, I love it because I know that they feel like they have an open door to be yeah. able to come and ask. And you know what? You do. President Shumway's door was always open for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't see why anyone would close a door to family. Um, uh, one thing I want to tell you that's very monumental to me with President Shumway, he said he would look at students in who they would be 20 years from now. Mm. And I started doing that. And as I look at people who they're going to be in 20 years from now, it changes everything about the way we interact because we're not saying where you are and here you, if you work with someone from where they're going to be in the future, they become that person immediately, especially in the way you interact with them. This is, People who do that at BYU Hawaii, the professors that do that at BYU Hawaii, those are the ones that are making the most impact and creating the most love. Everyone there is amazing. Every student finds someone that they need there. And that's why BYU Hawaii is so good is you get this opportunity in a small environment to make big things. Big impacts in the world, ripples. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Richie. Anyone, um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, you're like, um, and to join us, I think you're in a hotel somewhere in the hotel. world. <laughs> like, where is this guy? I'm just in a hotel. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't even, he's somewhere in the world in the hotel and he took time out of your time, out of your day to come and yeah. join us and to share your wisdom and share your spirit, share your commitment yeah. to this university. And that's every single person that we bring on the shows. That's, that's. I know. And the world gets to witness my COVID hair. You know what I mean? I haven't seen a person to cut my hair in like a, a year. It's a good time, you know? <laughs> it just takes a few scissors. I haven't cut mine for a year either. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, this is my COVID hair too. This is called Lake it. Hair Day. I love it. So, yeah, we can do it. We can do it together. So <laughs> be, um, yeah, that's what we should have been doing this whole time. <laughs> we'll, be like, we'll do an online like live hair cutting session. That'd be oh awesome. My gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time. We don't know if that's in standard anymore, Reggie. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's, it, all some of these students are taking their masks off and they have like goatees and stuff. And I'm uh, like, oh, <laughs> hey, what happened here? But no, they're uh, like, you know, hiding. I love, hiding it. I love it. I love it. Cool. Well, great. Thank you so much. We had some great comments. I'm just going to bring a couple of them on before we end. We said, Lily, looks like she just, R Richie is so amazing. Mahalo. Thank you so much. You're amazing, Yay. Lily. Can you see these as well? We see, uh, Lord, we say seasiders love from Ota. How do you say that? Ottawa. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my friend. Uh, he was in uh, the the student body presidency with me. Luke, he's amazing. We would we would be on a on a tandem bike before we were married, and we would we would whistle <laughs> all around campus. Again. It was it was it, there. You go. Another monumental memory right there. <laughs> oh, that's good. Todd says, "Great discussion. Thank you so much, Todd." Oh, he's in San Francisco. He's got that's where I'm from. Nice. San Francisco Bridge, right there. Woo. There. Very cool. We got. Who else did you see? From Maggie? Brussels. Mm -hmm. From Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Yeah. What's up, Maggie? Yeah. How are you? You're so cool. And we've got Aloha from Brussels. Thank you for your time. You're awesome. We appreciate you coming on. Oh, Jeannie says another thing. I know Richie from doing scouts with his mom, Auntie Emma. Instead I love Auntie. I love Auntie Emma so much. I I, I miss her so much. Uh, no one put on a better Eagle Scout performance <laughs> than Auntie Emma. 
Oh. Well, you're very much loved in this community. We appreciate your your efforts with the I love BYU and P PCC, BYU Hawaii, because there's so much great information and, and just it's been crazy how people are sharing all their stories on there and you just create a platform for us to connect from all yeah, over the place. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you do have the opportunity to be on campus, please go off campus, meet the IUs, the nicest family in, on the entire planet that serves people like no one else has ever know, served. Seriously? You know, go meet, go meet these leaders. Go, you know, I, I wash dishes in the Seasider. I wash dishes at Gateway at PCC. I was the night janitor at HRI. Through all these experiences and people I met, it completely changed my life. To mm -hmm. I take the opportunity to do things you might not otherwise do or want to do, because I promise you, it will make you a better human and you'll be able to serve others better. Amen to that. Thank you, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everybody, for... Um, uh, okay, so we're going to let you get on with your life today, <laughs> whatever. So I'm sure we'll see. We sent out uh, this show to a bunch of your friends and a bunch of our friends. So we'll see who uh, who comes back. We've got some from Mongolia. Meet the community. Mongolia is amazing. When I when I went there, I don't know what it's like now, but when I went there, there was there wasn't even a, a McDonald's, and uh, they they gave me a uh, mayor's milk that I I. I uh, <laughs> I, I drank with Odgo, who became the first stake president. You know, she he the husband of, of Aryuna, you know, who started uh, the cashmere company with me. I'm just saying, like, the stories and stories could go on and on and on. The most, like, interesting, amazing, incredible things and people you cannot get anywhere else. Like, BYU Hawaii. For Rock. The <laughs> Number one. I love you. <laughs> Number one. Oh, well, thank you so much, Richie. We will chat with you later. Keep cool. up the good work. And, well, uh, Peace out. Peace. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, you guys, everybody, for joining us today on the podcast. Just want to remind you we're here every Friday for the Aloha Friday podcast with alumni at 3 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Um, also, just an announcement. We have a career fair that is going to be going on. So for you alumni out there, if you have businesses of your own or businesses that you work for that you would like to expose or um, expose to our students so they have opportunities for employment, please email us at acs at byuh.edu. Uh, there's going to be a career fair at the end of the month. And so we are looking for businesses that would like to um, expose ex opportunities to our students. And if you're a student, um, please go to, I'm going to go ahead and put actually here, I'm going to take this little uh, link here. Sorry, you guys, I didn't have this up before. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. If you're a student and would like to register for it as well, um, there's going to be a ton of different companies that you can go for internships, that you can get information about what they do, what they're looking for, that sort of thing. Make sure you go there and register. Also, if you have anyone that you would like to have us on this podcast, we would love to have you on. We are booking out about a month or two in advance. And so we have different hosts. And then the last thing I just wanted to encourage you, if you are looking for advice or mentorship, in your life, as well as any kind of mentorship and student, students, we do interview Monday for our Monday mentoring sessions at 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And we do have students that are hosting those shows and they do a fantastic job. So thank you guys, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Becky Sampson with the Ho'o Kelly Department. And we want to send a beautiful aloha and mahalo to all of you. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.